Rye. Now, mate. Right. Good advice we from Wickham to Shrewsbury. I've been there once or You've twice, mate. You've seen how well he's made. I have. Okay, we're now looking at all his use. So, today we're looking at the passenger car market, but specifically um, gear and transmission oils. A bit like uh, engine technology, which has evolved, okay, to keep pace with things like emissions and demand and various others and duty cycles. Um, the same has happened with gear and transmission systems as well. So, we go back back in the day, you know, four speed manual gearboxes. EP90. Yeah. Love the smell of EP90, oh, absolutely. mate. Absolutely, you can't beat it, um, especially going down the nightclub, you know. Um, and, you know, three speed automatic transmissions, basic, basic transmission yeah. systems. Yeah. Um, and, they, and they did their job in the day, but as things have progressed, obviously we've gone to five speed, six speed manual gearboxes, 10 speed autos now. You know, 10 speed are quite common now. Who's got 10 speed? Oh, yeah, well, ZF do a 10 speed do box. They? Oh, yeah, there's, there's a few manufacturers now. The luxury oh, I car. I thought my van is 8 speed. I thought I was oh, swimming yeah. in gears. Oh, no, no. Yeah, the, a lot of the luxury. Ten speed. Yeah, so, some of the higher, higher models in, in product ranges now are right. 10 speed. Okay. Um, of course, the benefit is with, with the more ratios you've got, the, that, when you, you, when you, obviously, when you change between ratios, there's a little bit of a, you know, mm -hmm. the engine revs drop a little bit. But the closer those ratios are, the, the less of an engine rev drop there is, so you, you don't have to catch back up again, which yeah, is where your fuel yeah, inefficiencies yeah, yeah. lie, basically. Right, okay. So, okay. so the, the more ratios you've got in an auto box, the more fuel efficient you can make the, whole, the running of the whole drivetrain. So we're seeing that kind of um, change now. Um, but of course also, which has come along in the background with that, is dual clutch transmission systems. Mm, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that's like, is, is that not just a Volkswagen thing? No, no, well, that's their DSG box. So they right. have their own specific name for it, the DSG, mm -hmm. which is just a German acronym, uh, or abbreviation rather. But, yeah, but the DCD, the, the dual clutch transmission is used by a whole host of different manufacturers. Go They've on. all got their own system. So, so as you know, it's, it's, it's a manual transmission system, but with two, two clutch packs. So you're, you're preloading the next gear ratio. So, and you can drive these DCTs like an auto box. So it'll, it'll, it'll do that for you. Um, the hybrid vehicle that we have here today, with this guy DCT box on. Oh, is it? That's DCT. So yeah, so you'll be. Well, I used to get excited about DCT and DSG yeah. gearboxes. Well, but then the old paddle shifts, you know. Tractors had that in the seventies. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's where it came from. Did yeah. you know Essentially, that? Essentially, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But 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 of course, obviously, it was too big for a, for a car back then. The, those kind of transmission systems. But now they've refined them, of course, and okay. because now you've got the, the three different driving styles: auto, manual, or sequential shift, or okay. paddle shift. Paddle shift is it's great for a track day, but not really you know, practical around town. Yeah, I would yeah, yeah. But but the beauty of the DCT is because you're you're basically ready for the next gear ratio, so you've got it pre-engaged. Mm -hmm. Is that actually a DCT will change a gear ratios faster than an automatic transmission now? Right. It's right, absolutely right. it's it's fractional. So what's the benefit of an auto over a DCT? Well, a DCT because it, the guts of it are a manual box. Yep. Okay, there's less complexity to the design of a DCT. Okay. Less complexity with the DCT than there is an auto box. Absolutely. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, well, okay. If you look at the inside of a 10 speed auto compared to the inside of a, of a, of a, a dual clutch transmission system, there's, there's, there's much less complexity. Right. Okay, you've got a double clutch pack. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. you've got two clutch packs. Um, but then, of course, you've got a torque converter on, a, on, a, on an automatic anyway, mm -hmm. so that's, that's added complexity. So, so this vehicle here has got a DCT, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you, you can only drive it in auto mode. It doesn't allow you sort of sequential shift or paddle shift, which is fine. But the, the beauty of a DCT over uh, an automatic transmission, say a 10 speed automatic transmission, is, is the weight. It's, a, it's, not as, it's not as weighty as an automatic transmission. So if you can take weight out of right. a vehicle, yeah, 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 yeah. of course, you're improving fuel efficiencies all course, the time as yeah, well. So, yeah. so DCTs are quite popular now. And, and the, other, the other transmission type, of course, is the continuously variable transmission, the CVT, where you're using cones and a belt. Did you see that in a car? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, CV. I mean, one time, I think, CVT. I think, yeah. Hello, John Deere Gators. Go on, what else has CVT? My bloody mopeds from being kids, well, they, they all, were CVT. Yeah, I mean, some, not, some, some, some of the cats. early Ford, things like Fiestas, they put CVTs in. Did they? But, but the early designs were only in low horsepower engines. Yeah, uh, Because yeah. too much torque going through them and, and the belts would slip. Yes, okay, so, yes. Okay, so, but now they've got the belt technology right. They've got the frictional requirements of the lubricant right as well. You've got mm -hmm. to have the right oil in there. So now, there are, you know, some fairly high-powered vehicles now running with a CVT gearbox. Nice. It's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a marmite, because some people like it. The problem with CVTs, if, having driven one, is you don't get the engine tone change. 
you know, the engine stays at a certain rev yeah, range yeah, and, yeah. and all the work's been done by the CVT. So yeah, yeah. people feel a bit detached from the driving experience. So it's a personal choice. Oh, thing, I like you know. John Deere gay, I love it. Just yeah. sit in and put it, to it, the board. Exactly. It's One a, less thing to worry about. Yeah, I mean, it has its, it has its place, like all these things, you know, and choice, of course. But, but, but the, the reason why we've moved into these slightly more sophisticated uh, gearbox systems is, again, it's about improving fuel efficiency, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and again, it's a bit like taking, you know, you're taking the control away from the driver a little bit, you know, so because the computer will make a much better informed decision on the, the, the correct gear ratio yeah, for yeah, your driving, yeah. the driving conditions. Um, and of course, fuel efficiency reduces CO2 output and, and other harmful exhaust gases as well. So yeah, so, so if you look at a lot of these, these vehicles now, you know, the, the, the manual, six-speed manual gearbox is still an option, but a lot of these, uh, these alternatives now are taking preference. Autos, DCTs. Yeah. Absolutely. So go, go on, and the service life on some of these then? What are um, we looking at? Like? Well, again, it, it's all about the OEM's requirements, okay, or the OEM specification but and the OEM's It would be nowhere near as frequent as engine oil changes because we've got no oh, combustion no, again, happening in there, have we? So we're, yeah. not, we're not contaminating exactly. the oil in that way. Exactly. I mean, it could be 100,000 kilometres, depending. Is that the know, sort of numbers so, you'd see? Yeah, again, it all depends on, on the vehicle, the, the, the size of the transmission, the OEM's requirements. but. Yeah, you're right. You're not changing it every five minutes like you do an engine or that's right, okay. It's a completely but different you'd service. See, in a DCT box, you'd see something like a hundred thousand. That's not. That's yeah, not. Yeah. Again, it could be you know, sixty to hundred thousand k. Right. Just depending. That's right. Just right. depending. But again, you say it. It, it will. Whatever the manufacturer's requirements mm -hmm. are. You, and you, you make the oil for that. Because I see yeah. what we've got here. What's this? Some sort of universal DCT oil then? Yeah. So that's a dual clutch transmission system. Go um, on. Fluid. Okay, so like in all these, these fluids, again, they have to be, these lubricants have to be fine-tuned to the kind of uh, mechanical system that are in there. So obviously with automatic transmissions, you're looking at you know, the brake bands, the, the, the clutch packs for engagement. But there are two types of DCT fluid because you Go can on. have wet clutch DCTs and dry clutch DCTs. Oh, I'm learning here, so, boy. <laughs> so we're not, no DCT box would have an ATF in? No, absolutely right. not. No, they will have de they will have fluids specifically to look after the the, the manual gear sets yep. which are in there, but then a bit like a motorcycle wet clutch, you know, if it's a wet clutch DCT, then the 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 actual uh, formulation has to be uh, fine tuned to make sure those clutch packs don't slip because they're immersed in oil. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As so on, we, on a motorcycle so we don't clutch. want friction between the gears. But we want friction in the clutch, in so the, clutch the, the oil has yeah, got to do. So exactly, it's, not a con yeah. it's a contradiction in the oil. It's a little bit. It's just this balancing act of chemistry. Right, okay. Again, the chemistry is oh, right. So that's specific. Go on, give us an example of a gearbox that's got dry clutches and a gearbox. Well, wet most clutches. manufacturers will pick one or the other. Okay. Right. If what, look, what's a Volkswagen system? The Volkswagen system. I think they've got they've got both. If I remember they, correctly, they? yeah. Okay. I'm not sure why they have both. But Might they be dry clutch both. and wet clutch. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, 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 say the manufacturer will pick a particular route. So you have to make sure you have a DCT fluid which is, is wet clutch compatible. Um, um, so, so you've got those frictional requirements and the load and the protection of the, the bearings and the gear sets and the actual mm -hmm. gearbox itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, then we move on to things like CVTs, con continuously variable transmissions. But they generally be dry though, CVTs. No, no, again, they have a CVT fluid in there. Do they? Because you've got well, a steel belt running on, on steel cones. So if you don't lubricate that, that, then of course you, it, that's going to wear oh, so out. So that's in, that's in oil. Yeah. Because oh, I know like that and scooters, they're just belts that run. Absolutely, yeah. But, you know, but these, running fresh air. Well, these are pretty heavy duty things. Right, so okay. I suppose they've got more torque to deal with. Yeah, a lot so. more torque. Um, mm. So you've got, to, you've got to protect the chain linkages to make sure you don't get any wear there. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, then you've, you've got the, the, the belt sliding up and down the cones to give you the different, different gear ratios. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a frictional requirement you've got to look after and obviously pretend, pre pre prevent wear from taking place. Mm -hmm. But you don't want it slipping on the cones either. So you've got positive drive all the time. So yeah, so, so all these fluids are, are fine tuned for the specific gear system that they're designed for. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and you, you can't really chop and change them. And of course, we've still got the, the old, you know, six-speed manual gearboxes. So, but again, you've still got to make the correct selection of, of gear lubricant for that. Um, oh, don't worry, I know about that. Yeah, you I know my about tranny, it. I put 85, 90 in it, in my old tranny, and the, the Synchro didn't like that. No, no. No, she didn't like that. She didn't like that until she got, until the end, everything had got warm. <laughs> it was just great in gear. So yeah, I soon learned yeah, yeah. to put the 75 in. And, and of course, that, that's, that's changed over the years as well. You know, 80, 90 gear, gear rolls to 75 W90. 75 gives you a good cold start, okay. down to minus 40 degrees C. So it circulates, splashes around in the gearbox right, and cold okay. better. 
um, which improves fuel efficiency. 75 into minus what? Minus, minus 40. 40, yeah. So uh, 75 W gear oil will give you minus 40 cold start fluidity right. if it's okay. formulated correctly as, as it should be. Um, but we've seen that now moving down to 75 W80s. Again, you know, the thinner the oil, the, the, the less um, mechanical drag there is in mm -hmm. the gearbox. Yeah, yeah. And, and some, some gearboxes are designed around just 75 W monograde, so really quite thin. Um, so we've seen that kind of evolution in manual gearboxes. The other big thing we're starting to see now in automatic transmission fluid as well. So your standard sort of Dexron 3 type automatic transmission Go fluid. On. Okay, lots of OEM specifications that are attached to that as well, but they're getting thinner now. So we're getting ultra low viscosity or, or thin ATF fluids now coming oh, out. So the ATF market. isn't just ATF. So some vehicles, especially these new 10 speed autos, they're moving to what we should say these ultra low viscosity. Mm -hmm. Uh, automatic transmission fluids. Again, it's about reducing the mechanical drag because that system is all hydraulically op operated. You know, yes, yes. You know, applying the brake, uh, the brake vans and the clutch packs. Mm -hmm. So if, if that oil is, is 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 getting thinner, that means there's less drag as this kind yeah, of operation is taking place. Yeah, yeah. Less CO2 place. generated. All and again, of that. all the way down yeah, the drive line yeah, to the yeah, wheels, yeah. so you're producing less emissions all the time. So, so so not only are the transmission fluids obviously uh, evolved as as they needed to, but of course. The gear oils have had to go with them, and the transmission oils have had to follow them down the down. Never the stops, as well. does it? It never, it never stops. stops. It's a move, literally a moving feast. If yeah, you excuse yeah, the pun. Yeah. yeah, but again, it all goes down to making sure you're picking the correct uh, specification for that gearbox to maximise the life out of it, to maximise and optimise its operational efficiency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, as I say, with, with modern vehicle designs now, to to re reduce emissions essentially. Fair um, play. Yeah, and it's complex, but of course we have, you know, we have a technical services department at Morris, so you can pick the phone up and get some advice if necessary, and we'll advise you on what lubricants you need for your particular Short gearbox no, system. Mate. Short or no? Yeah. <laughs> learning, mate. Every time yeah. I come to see you, we just learning. keep ticking the boxes. Yeah, keep ticking the play, boxes. Mate. Yeah. Fair play. Cheers, guy. Good lad. So if you'd like to see any more content like this or videos with Guy, then visit the Morris Lubricants website or our YouTube channel.